Right. And that makes sense. It makes sense that job creation would be the thing that actually sustains the economy, doesn't cause inflation. Exactly. Um, it's much a much healthier society for sure. But they so so question about that, because during the during 2020, they not only did they give people money, right? They, they gave everybody a bit of money to try to supposedly sustain themselves or whatever. But they did create those PPP loans, right? And they gave those to businesses in order to maintain jobs. Now, that sounds a bit different than what you're talking about. Because you're talking about growth, loans for growth. Is it the same concept if you give loans for just stick around, don't don't kill jobs, don't go anywhere? Yes. Exactly. That's not very productive. I mean, I mean, most people realize that what happened in 2020 was not very productive when these um, loans were given to companies. But actually, that's still a drop in the ocean. There was a much bigger problem. And that was really what what created this inflation, namely um, the central banks adopted the type of QE I was recommending for Japan for a deflationary situation with a bust banking system and money supply contracting. My recommendation was central banks should purchase the non-performing assets from banks and the performing assets from non-banks. That way you get the bank balance sheets cleaned up and by purchasing assets, central bank purchase of assets from non-banks, you're pushing money straight into the economy. That's what they did in March 2020. But the problem was that bank credit was already growing at 5 6%. And in most countries, banks were doing fine. Bank credit was expanding. There was no deflation. But they were using a tool designed for a deflationary contractionary situation. And they expanded money supply even more. So we had record, post-war record money supply expansion. And this was done by the central banks purchasing these assets. They hired the likes of BlackRock to, um, to do this for them and just go out and purchase assets. And they used central bank money to fund this. Now, that is direct money injection into the economy. And it was given to essentially... Um, asset owners and a whole lot of rich people, <laughs> owners of some big businesses and financial players, made a fortune by this uh, trillions of money being pumped into the economy directly from the central bank through this process of purchasing assets from non banks. Now, they did this globally by the fact that it was so coordinated. It's a very specific policy, you know, that is very rarely taken. I recommended it for Japan in, in 1994, 1995. For 20 years, the Bank of Japan has said, oh, we don't know what you're talking about. This is not possible. We can't do this. March 2020, come March 2020, the Bank of Japan knew exactly how to do it. And every other central bank, a major central bank, did it at the same time. And of course, that proves that it's not a coincidence. It's not a policy mistake. Because it's a very, very specific policy. And by coincidence, they all took it in March 2020. So clearly, they knew exactly what they were doing. But that was the policy to create inflation. If you do this, you know for sure you're going to get inflation. That's why I warned from May 2020 onwards, when I had the data, they are creating significant inflation that's going to happen 18 months later. And that's exactly what happened. So it was a central bank policy choice. Like, by the way, already in the 1970s, when most people think, oh, the 70s, that was the inflationary decade. That was due to OPEC and the oil embargo and all that oil stuff and the war in the Middle East. Sounds That's the really same story similar. they're trying to sell us right, you know, yeah. now. Sounds exactly the but same. But really, it's not true. Already then, it was also the central banks doing this, if you look at the data. Why would they do this? What's the point? I mean, I, I hear you. You're saying they're trying to create a crisis because when you when you create a crisis and you can affect change, what is the change you think they're trying to do right now to us? Yes, well, actually, we have to look at, at, at the picture, the big picture of what has happened since 2020. And, and on the one hand, the central bankers have come out since 2020 very quickly, already in March 2020, with some public statements about what they want to do. And surprise, surprise, they want to introduce CBDCs. So that is clearly one goal. Um, now, in order to introduce central bank digital currencies, 
What they need is digital IDs. And clearly they've been working backwards from their goal. How can we introduce CBDCs? We need an excuse. Um, and then work backwards. What do we need for that? We need digital IDs. Well, again, how do we introduce digital IDs? We need another excuse to do that. Well, the so-called pandemic delivered a great excuse. Uh, well, at least they thought. I mean, it wasn't really very convincing, but somehow they argued that you needed to be injected with this uh, experimental uh, substance. And, and then somehow you need it in order to enter uh, any restaurant or shop you need a digital ID confirming that you've been injected when, of course, it was very click, uh, quickly clear that this was not, this injection was not actually slowing transmission or preventing illness and had a lot of risks attached to them. So, so the justification wasn't very strong, but they definitely pushed these digital IDs, the back, so called vaccine passports, very hard and again in a coordinated fashion. So you see where this is going uh, and the goal is actually on the monetary side that is the the prize that they're, they're aiming for they're aiming for cbdc's connected to digital ids and that means we're talking about the most totalitarian control system in 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 human history because this is a control tool that not only gives you as a controller complete visibility of what everyone is doing every transaction the money is moving from where to where you know everything but the monitoring is only one aspect and of course you can use that information for your purposes if you're the controller the central planner but actually the these cbdc's are programmable and you can use um tools algorithms big data algorithms, which they sell as, as uh, artificial intelligence, uh, in order to have rules about who can buy what for what purpose, at what time and at what place, where, and therefore control your movement, um, control all your activities. And, oh, Kim, you were critical of central banks recently. Oh, your CBDC is not working today, is it? <laughs> or you're trying to buy this book, or you can buy another book, but not that one. That's a bit too critical of central banks. So you can you can see this. I mean, this in history, and, and also the human history of dictatorships, there's never been such a powerful control tool as they're about to introduce. And that is the big prize they're aiming for, I think. That is really scary.